which uh, justifies uh, the fact that we are uh, reaching out and asking um, Iran for more uh, clarification about them. In fact, it's about uh, three, but one uh, place is no longer uh, relevant in terms of a potential uh, visit there. So uh, this is uh, the basis of our interest at the moment. Thanks, Mr. Grossi. Um, two questions. Uh, you, reiter you, you reiterated calls for members to rescind their SQPs today yes. and to um, apply modified or full CSA, hopefully with additional protocol. Um, when do you expect uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to rescind its SQP and to implement full scope uh, safeguards? And along with that question, um, the IAEA, even before you came in, has been assisting uh, Saudi Arabia with the front end of its nuclear fuel cycle. Can you give us an update on the outcomes of that fuel cycle assistance in Saudi Arabia and kind of explain to us why a country gets fuel cycle assistance before it has a safeguards um, regime in place? Very good. Uh, well, there are several questions in, in, in that. I think the SQP and rescission uh, of SQP is something which is very important for us. Uh, we believe that uh, limiting the ability of the agency to have uh, information about activities uh, in countries is, is, is very important. Um, in, in this particular case, uh, there is an ongoing project, as you know, of a low-power uh, research uh, reactor which has not received fuel yet, so there is no introduction of nuclear material yet. Um, so uh, it is uh, very important that the agency engages actively with the country uh, to make sure that at, at, the, at the right time, uh, they uh, proceed with uh, this legal step, which is, of course, fundamental, because um, as of the moment where uh, the uh, fuel is introduced, now then, of course, their, their status changes, and they will have to be subject to a different uh, inspection regime than they have now. We have been um, engaging, the agency has been engaging very positively with, um, with Saudi Arabia, so uh, I uh, hope that uh, prior, uh, and certainly expect that prior to that step, uh, the legal uh, steps will be taken. Nothing makes me think that this will not be the case. In terms of the technical assistance, that is part of what we do with, with many countries, with many acceding countries or countries that are preparing to uh, step up there are nuclear activities, and it's not only on the front end of the fuel uh, cycle. We talk about safety, we talk about security with them, because it's, it's not, not, not a minor step to change your activities from very minor lab um, scale activities to something which includes uh, the, uh, the, the presence of a reactor. Uh, on, although it's, it's a very small unit, for those knowing the characteristics of any such um, unit, is a unit especially or almost exclusively for education and training. Uh, uh, but this changes the status. So we need to, to help them uh, in capacity building, in, in preparing their technical people to do it, to do it right. So that is Let me just follow up specifically, because yes. I'm, I'm not sure, sure if you understand. I'm talking about uranium um, uh, m uh, mining uh, and exploration specifically. Um, I mean, this is an activity that's kind of been on it's been, it's been a very vigorous debate historically in yeah. the agency about whether that should be part of the technical cooperation packages offered. And, and this is a case specifically where mining and exploration activity is, go, is ongoing right now mm -hmm. in the absence of safeguards. I would say something very uh, general, uh, Jonathan, not about that project specifically, but in general, whenever any nuclear activity is ongoing, the agency should be there, training, preparing, assisting. Thank you. Um, Albert, OTDBA, Chairman Price Agency. Hello. Hello. Um, 
Two questions. Number yes. one, uh, on, on, on the board and Iran. Um, last time you also hoped for backing from the board on the access question in Iran. Uh, nothing substantially has changed. Do you, do you, are you seeking stronger backing? Do you want them to, to underscore their backing with, with action, like a resolution? That's my first question. And the second question is, Iran issued a statement following your last report last week in which it basically argued that the IA has no right to conduct investigations based on intelligence, what you yes. refer to as, as member state information. Um, what, what do you say to that argument? Well, um, many important things in your question, uh, certainly. Uh, in, in terms of the board, it is obviously up to, to the members to decide how to respond to our report. I, as DG, am not particularly seeking a particular way uh, for them to respond. My responsibility is when I see that something uh, important, relevant, substantial is, um, has to be put in front of the board to do it. So, and to give them all the information that is behind my actions for them to understand, to evaluate and to take the necessary um, uh, reaction, action, or just nothing. It's, it's, up to the, it's up to the members. We think it's a very relevant issue and th that it should be uh, put in front of them for, um, uh, for their consideration. So this is, this is one thing. And the second part was, sorry? The second part was Iran's argument that the ah, IAS yes. investigation should be based on intelligence from other countries. Well, this is, this is uh, we've heard this before. Um, uh, what I can say is that, um, of course, the agency uh, uh, works on the basis of a very rigorous, I would say, dogged, uh, meticulous uh, technical and scientific analysis of information coming from the state itself, information that the agency has, and, and other types of uh, information. So all of that, uh, nothing is taken at uh, face value. The agency goes, as I was saying, uh, through a very systematic process uh, of, of analysis. That uh, is, is part of the agency standard um, operation. There's nothing really new uh, about about this. So, um, and there are, of course, no uh, legal um, ambiguities uh, here. Uh, when the agency requests um, any such um, access on the basis of information it has, it has made that information its own, whatever that information may be. There is a, a, there is a universe, there is a whole spectrum of things that, the, that uh, our technical experts, safeguards experts, have in front of them. And so they analyze it, and it's only when they feel that there is enough there to justify a more specific, focus, pointed dialogue that we come with a question. And in this case, we started with questions. We got no answers on the questions. And at some point, we decided to also ask for access to uh, the places to, to, to know more. So uh, our view on that, uh, I think it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, Francois Murphy from Reuters. Hi, DG. See you. Um, see you too. Uh, is there a danger that uh, the more you press Iran on these uh, old sites, which uh, Iran argues is not entirely legitimate, um, uh, so is there a danger that the more you press them on these old sites, uh, they, they, they might reduce cooperation with the IAEA at the declared sites that are still currently in operation? Well, that's for them to say. Uh, I hope, certainly, that that is not the case. I think uh, Iran, and not only Iran, any other country, any other member state, um, should not uh, gauge or measure their degree of cooperation against the comfort that they have on the questions we are putting. Uh, to them. Obligations are obligations. And we, of course, as the IAEA, cannot get into this sort of uh, um, game of evaluating whether um, by carrying out our safeguards, responsibilities, other things may happen. 
uh, so that we shouldn't be doing our, our work. Uh, that would be the realm of pure speculation and would make our technical work completely um, uh, impossible to carry out because there's always going to be some consideration somewhere that something could have impacts here or there. What we do is to focus on our mandate. When we have something relevant, we put the question. Just to follow up, so this, yes. is, this is one aspect of a relative, yes, of a sure. multifaceted dialogue you have with Iran. So, how would you describe the current status of your of, of your well, dealings with Iran? Uh, the, uh, there are different there are different aspects to it. As I as I'm saying in my reports and as I was um, saying in my statement, which I suppose it's public by now, uh, there are areas where our cooperation is ongoing, uh, and there is this issue where quite clearly we are in disagreement. So, um, so it's a mixed, it's a mixed bag. I hope we can do better. Yes. This is Takish Tsuchi of Kyoto News. Can you, thank you <laughs> very much. Good to see you again. Yes, good to see you again, good yes. See. I'd like to ask about the Iran Safeguard Report. Yes. Again. And in case Iran continues to refuse giving access to the agency, uh, the consequences consequences might be uh, serious if we consider what happened in uh, Iraq many years back. And so I guess it's good to disclose as much information as possible. And could you identify these three locations that agency is requesting accesses? And, uh, could you ex explain how could these materials and activities have been uh, serious in terms of non-proliferation? Yes, yes. Uh, well, in terms, I, I, I wouldn't get into into uh, comparisons. I think uh, the, the situations are, are, are very different. Um, here we, we do have a process. Uh, of, of engagement uh, with, with Iran, and we do have a disagreement, which is clear, on this particular request for access. But we do also have, and this is well known, there are lots of uh, other verification activities ongoing uh, in the country. So I think one has to establish the facts uh, clearly no, in order not, not to rush into, in, into uh, other um, speculations. In terms of the places, uh, the places are, are relevant because there is information on, on, on the three of them um, having um, um, been uh, places where nuclear activity and the presence of nuclear material uh, is, is, uh, is very possible. Uh, so uh, the, the places are well known to, to us and, and, and to them uh, and uh, suffice to say that uh, it is clear where these places uh, are. Hello, uh, Homa. Hello, Desi. how are you? Thank you from Press TV. Now, uh, if I may, just two questions. Yes. Because you said in your remarks that uh, the information that you have, uh, you've had for a couple of years and you've been validating this information. We know that in 2015, the case of Iran's past nuclear activities was closed. So is this information coming after that uh, decision was made about closing that uh, dossier, so to speak? That's my first question. And my second question, if I may, uh, a bit similar to the question that Reuters put to you about Iran's cooperation, uh, because Iran has been publicly saying that it wants this close relationship with the agency to be maintained, and it wants this uh, cooperation uh, not to be adversely affected. So I'd just like to have your view on uh, whether you think this situation is going to negatively influence this relationship. Yes, Thank you. Yes. Well, uh, two very relevant questions. Um, on, on, on the first issue, um, let me say that we are not in the exercise of revising or reviewing past conclusions from the border governors uh, or from our safeguards department. What was said in, 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 in 2015 was said then on the basis of information then, and we are not into that exercise. But one thing needs to be understood. The um, safeguards work, verification work, non-proliferation work is constant, is permanent. 
Um, so uh, we evaluate uh, old information, we evaluate new information, we evaluate a number of things. Um, and then we decide whether it is worthy of, uh, of a further um, exchange, which is basically what we are seeking. What we, had, we are seeking is a, a dialogue uh, with uh, Iran to a certain uh, whether um, these, uh, the activities that we believe took place in these places and the nuclear material uh, exists, is there or not, and should be put uh, under safeguards or, or not. So in this case, it is obviously uh, quite uh, relevant, non-proliferation-wise. Uh, in terms of the cooperation, of course, we need this cooperation. We must cooperate. Um, and this, is, this has been part of my conversations with the Iranian uh, authorities at higher levels. Um, I believe that, and I regret that at this point we have this disagreement, uh, and I will continue to exercise all possible efforts to uh, overcome uh, those. Cooperation is needed. We have a large uh, dossier in front of us. We have to continue working together uh, to provide all the clarifications that are uh, expected. Yes, hello, I'm Stephanie hello, hello, how are you? I'm a freelance journalist. Yes. Um, I, I know you're not the chair of the board, but still, could you give us an indication of, of what we can expect today or in the next few days uh, as, as a follow-up to your reports and the fact that, that there has not been uh, a s satisfactory answer by Iran, as, as you mentioned in your reports, uh, for four months uh, now. So is there anything we can expect by the board today or in the next few days, also given this controversy around the virtual meeting, yes. whether it can actually adopt decisions, yes or yes, no? Yes, yes. Well, my, my impression, what I get from the, from the, uh, from the chair, uh, of course, uh, she, she is the authorized uh, authority, authority um, of, the, of the board, uh, is that uh, consultations have been continuing in a, in a constructive uh, way to um, ensure that the board continues uh, its work uh, virtually or otherwise uh, in the next few days. I, of, of course, expect uh, a, a very active discussion uh, on, the, uh, on the issues uh, related to, to Iran. Regarding the what kind of outcome, well, this is completely in the realm of uh, countries. And as I was saying, um, it, it's not my uh, my uh, area, and I'm not trying to be evasive here, I think you know me by now, I don't like to evade questions, but I believe that as Director General I should be very careful in not indicating that I expect one thing or the other. I think uh, my job was to prepare a report to, to say and to inform the, the, the Board of Governors of what I see and to express my impression. My impression is that I have a serious concern, so it's up to them to see and to evaluate and, and, and do something about it. Thanks. Thanks. Just a f quick point of clarification yeah. on that. Um, you said that uh, you have to cooperate, you have a disagreement right now, but that you have a large dossier in front of you that needs to be evaluated. Is that a suggestion that there will be more sites coming up that you want to take environmental samples from? I mean, how large of a dossier is this? Not at this moment, and, and let me clarify something. When I talk about dossier, I'm talking about the work on verification in Iran, all right, which is very important, as you know, and Iran itself has been saying that they are one of the most verified countries in the world, that there is all this uh, activity ongoing in Iran, many inspections of different types, uh, which is um, correct because there is the normal verification work under the CSA, uh, the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement, traditional, and the additional protocol. And on top of that, we have an added task, which was given uh, to us by the board um, on, the, on the JCPOA. So this is my, my, my meaning when I refer to what we have I in front of us, but nothing else, really. Hi, this is Jordi from EFE. Hello, Jordi. Uh, concerning this last point you were making, <clears throat> is it on the board, is your impression that everybody 
it's clear that they're two separate things because my impression is some countries try to mix one thing with the other. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a pertinent question and, and, and some uh, have views uh, about this. And, and pre precisely this is the reason why I decided back in March that this should be subject to or treated under a separate uh, report so that there are no, there's no confusion here. One thing is our work on, on, the, on the JCPOA, which is, uh, um, uh, I would say, as an added task as prescribed by the statute that uh, mandates that we take, uh, apart from our normal work, that we take specific assignments which are given to us by member states, and this was, this was one. And the other thing is how um, Iran is complying with its normal obligations under the additional protocol, which is why we have uh, this problem. Uh, complementary access, as you know, is at the heart of the additional protocol. Um, it's one of the most important measures that all countries, including Iran, agreed to when they agreed back in 1997 to have the additional protocol. So uh, this, is, um, uh, this is why uh, these things need, need to be uh, se separated, because they, they are part of different, uh, different issues. Do we have a question over there? Yes. Uh, hi. <coughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Yoshitake from Japan's Asahi newspaper. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, my big question uh, is uh, Board of Governors are uh, meetings are always conducted behind the door, and uh, uh, isn't it a good opportunity to uh, promote more transparency, uh, taking this opportunity of virtual setting? Um, you know, it, I know it's uh, uh, there is uh, some difficult legal difficulties, but uh, um, IAEA is almost only uh, international organizations which does not open the decision-making process. So w what do you think about that? Do you mean that, uh, just to clarify your question, yes. that the, the virtual setting would be yes. an opportunity to more transparency? Is that what your idea? Uh, yes, to, to open the decision-making process, at least partly. Uh, well, uh, I suppose that uh, my, my clear answer would be no because the, the meetings of the Board of Governors are restricted, are closed meetings. The fact that we have a virtual session this time, as you know, does not um, stem from a desire to be more open. And I'm not judging whether this is good or bad. For some, it would be perfect to have full transparency. For some others, uh, don't, not. Uh, the, 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 the virtual nature of the meeting is, is concerns regarding meeting uh, in, you know, in, a, in a physical uh, format like we are doing now, uh, which were expressed uh, at, at some point. And um, so the decision-making uh, process, it's the same as always. And in this, in this regard, um, it will continue to be, uh, to be a, a close one. Again, I'm not um, meaning here a value judgment about transparency, more transparency or less transparency. I'm just addressing your specific question and the nature of this, uh, you know, out of the ordinary um, board uh, is, is of a different, completely different uh, origin. But we, we do have and we will continue to have opportunities like this, I hope, to discuss openly what's been discussed and what's decided once this happens. Uh, if I may, I would like to add something to what uh, Jonathan said about the Saudi uh, cooperation with the agency. How, yes. How do you describe it? And is the agency worried about more nuclear activities in Saudi Arabia, or is it just a simple uh, educational training? Uh, no, we are not worried about uh, activities in Saudi Arabia. Um, the construction of a, of a research reactor is completely normal, and we have a, a good engagement with the, with the authorities there, as I was explaining to Jonathan. So uh, we, we don't we don't have any 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 worries uh, in in that regard. Uh, when we have worries, we say it and we explain why, 
not about Saudi Arabia in general. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for your interest. I continue to be at your disposal bilaterally, if you so wish, and uh, we will continue. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon.